And I asked him, I said, hey, man, you are a Texas fan. I mean, this guy works with the football team. If you had to play Alabama this Saturday, how are you feeling about the game? And these four words he proceeded to say, it stood out to me. He said, man, we're in trouble. I hope all of you are having a great Wednesday. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. We got to talk about Alabama football. And what's really funny about this, if you've been watching the channel dating back to the offseason, I said heading into this year, it feels like deja vu of the 2015 team when we had quarterback problems and also Jacob Coker, he won the starting job about three, four weeks in. That 2015 team that Saban had was not one of his better teams. But, and I have a real big but, Nick Saban in that same year, similar to this year, put on a coaching clinic. And I think Saban actually relishes in the opportunity of coaching a team that's not very talented because he gets to show off his skills. And well, 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 fast forward time to our current date, taking a look at this year's team where we currently are and comparing them to that 2015 team is looking like a good comparison. To remind some of y'all, and you can't make this crap up, that 2015 team also lost a night game early in the season. I believe it was the third game to Ole Miss. Ironically enough, that game was also at home. With all that great stuff being said, though, in today's video, we're here to talk about the one thing that this year's team is doing completely different than that 2015 team, and it's terrifying a lot of people. There is one big and major difference. We're going to talk all about that, but also we're going to take a look at some of the comments on the previous videos because I was asking you guys, let me know your thoughts on the Jimbo situation. Let me know your thoughts on Mississippi State and all that. We're going to take a look at those. We got a lot to go over, so Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now without further ado, let's get out. All right, so first things first, I was scrolling on Twitter looking at some of the replies in the comment section, and what is this? I just happened to scroll across this right now, and the guy's name, or the username, is Matt B. A Pickle, and the profile picture is me on a pickle. I don't even care about the comment. It's him talking about Jimbo Fisher potentially going to Michigan State, but what even inspired this? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to admire the dedication that went into this, all the effort. On a serious note, let's take a look at some real deal comments. Games for Life said, hey Matt, I'm a student at Mississippi State and I feel bad for Arnett, for those of you who don't know, the head coach who just got fired because of the impossible situation he was put in. That being said, I don't think Dan Mullen will be a good fit. Mississippi State needs a coach that is good at recruiting and I don't think that Mullen would be able to get the recruits needed to get back to eight and four, maybe nine and three. Keep pushing for greatness. Thank you for the kind words. That's a very interesting comment because most of you know I am for Dan Mullen, I was like, hey, that'd be a match made in heaven, at least to me. I thought he'd be a top candidate for the job, and if I was a Mississippi State fan, I'd want him. Dan Mullen was awesome there, and the last time he was a head coach, he had Mississippi State ranked number one in the first ever college football playoff poll, for those of you that don't remember that. That's way back in 2014 when Dak Prescott was there. But to attest to his point here, he did a good job of explaining why he doesn't want Dan Mullen, because he stated, I think Mississippi State needs a coach that is good at recruiting. For those of you that don't know, Dan Mullen has made this clear. He has stated it publicly. He doesn't like to recruit. He said this back at Florida, and it held true. The only thing Dan Mullen likes to do is coach. And for that reason alone, that's why me personally, I think he would be a good fit for Mississippi State. I never thought Dan Mullen was a good fit for Florida, and he wouldn't be a good fit for a big time school like a Tennessee, Florida, LSU, Bama, Auburn, Georgia, because at those schools, you need to recruit. Those schools' expectations are to win 9, 10, 11 games every single year. But at Mississippi State, I'd say their standards are just to win seven to nine games per year, and you're going to be okay. And since Dan Mullen doesn't like to recruit a lot, and he likes to work with what he's got, that's why I think he'd be good at Mississippi State. It's a really tricky conversation because Dan Mullen, when it comes to the X's and O's, I think he's brilliant. But when it comes to recruiting, not so much, and that's the main part of being the head coach. Moving along here, we'll read off one more comment. Jeremy said, Dabo, referring to the Dabo situation, does not want to use a transfer portal, and A&M has the funds to just purchase players, so I think it'd be mutually beneficial. It's honestly the only way I can see him staying a head coach without finally getting with the times. Wow, that is an outstanding point that I haven't thought about. Because I stated, I think Dabo going to A&M would be somewhat a good fit. A&M and Dabo both cringy and weird in their own ways. They'd be two peas in a pod. But also, remember, Dabo Swinney, he doesn't like the transfer portal. He doesn't want to use it. And at A&M, he wouldn't have to. He could just buy all these recruits. Really good point from my man Jeremy. Thank you for that comment. You know what? We'll read off one more from my man Caleb here. Hey, Matt, A&M student here. I think Elko, which I stated. Now, hey, Matt, A&M student here. I think Elko would be a great hire. 
Seeing what he was done with Duke and considering the fact that he's familiar with the program, he was AM's defensive coordinator back in 2021, I think he'd be a great fit. I couldn't agree anymore. That's what I harped on in the video. And I think AM should go after Elko. That would be my number one target. And I could sit up here and read these comments off all day, but we gotta get to move on to the main topic, the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video. What's going on with Alabama? Well, before we even get going here, I need to share a story with y'all. I was talking to one of my sources that is very involved with the Texas football program. He works with the team or whatnot, and we was talking about the playoff rankings earlier this morning, or not really talking about them, just some case and scenarios that could happen if all these teams went out. And I asked him, I said, hey man, you are a Texas fan. I mean, this guy works with the football team. If you had to play Alabama this Saturday, how are you feeling about the game? I can't emphasize this enough. This is a guy who is involved with the Texas football program. This isn't an Alabama fan. This isn't even a regular college football fan. This is a Texas fan. And these four words he proceeded to say, it stood out to me. He said, man, we're in trouble. Those were his words to describe how he would feel if Alabama and Texas played this Saturday. Man, we're in trouble. So of course, me being curious, I kind of knew what he was hinting at, but I asked him, I said, well, what do you mean by that? Can you explain? Can you elaborate a little bit? And I already knew the answer to the question because anybody that's been keeping up and watching college football, you know this. He stated, well, Matt, Alabama is getting better and better and better every single week, like I've been telling you guys. And also on the contrary, he told me, now I disagree with this a little bit, but he said, I wouldn't say Texas isn't getting worse, or he said we're getting worse, but I would more so have say we haven't gotten too much better since that week two game. And I agree with him to a certain extent, but I would argue and say since the Alabama game, Texas has gotten worse. They're barely beating these five and four, 500 teams by three points. They've had three 20 point leads in the past three or four games in which they've blew completely. I'll put it to you like this. Nobody looks at this Texas team currently and goes, oh yeah, they could beat Georgia. They could seriously compete for a national championship. Nobody. You hear people say that about Washington, Oregon, the Seminoles, uh, who wants Michigan, Ohio State, but not Texas. Nobody's taking Texas that serious, and it's for a good reason. Why would you? They've been struggling. And I know the argument that everybody's going to present. I already know. Well, Matt, they won the games. Look, I get it, but at the end of the day, you haven't looked good winning them, and you can't disagree with that. Continuing along here, another point he touched on was Jalen Milrow has also gotten way better. And I think it goes hand in hand. Alabama will only go as far as Jalen Milrow will take them. I think it's as simple as this. If Alabama has great quarterback play, they can beat anybody. If they don't have great quarterback play, they can almost lose to anybody. I mean, there's some small factors here and there, like the defense, offensive line, but the main X factor is Milrow. Make no mistakes about it. And since his play and his confidence and everything about him has went up 10,000% since that Texas game, so is this Alabama team. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a real deal serious question if you're not a Texas and Alabama fan. If you're a fan right now of Ohio State or Michigan, who would you rather play, Texas or Alabama? Let me know in the comments. I can't speak for you. I don't know how you feel. It's why I'm asking you the question, but I would assume... 90% of you would say Texas. Nobody wants to play Alabama right now. Nobody. And I already know what everybody's going to say. Well, Matt, Texas beat Alabama. Okay, buddy. I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about who would you rather play right now, Texas or Alabama. I'm not talking about the playoff. I'm not talking about the ranking. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm just talking about who has been better since the week two game. Another thing that is quite terrifying, at least in my eyes, and there could be some bias here because obviously I am an Alabama fan, is the way they're winning games. I thought the only way Alabama could beat teams like Tennessee and LSU was gonna come down to the defense. They're gonna have to hold LSU and Tennessee to like 17, 20 points. Well, no, I was extremely wrong on that because Alabama is just simply outscoring teams. Granted, yes, the defense is playing good. I love the way our defense is playing, but our offense is just scoring on anybody right now. I'm not going to harp on that Kentucky game too much because it is Kentucky, but look at what we've done the last three games. Matter of fact, I'm curious. Let me pull it up to get the exact numbers. In Alabama's last three games, the offense has scored 49 points against Kentucky, 42 against LSU. It could have been more, but they just ran out the clock at the end. And last but not least, 34 against Tennessee. Against Kentucky, Jalen Milrow, 15 for 22, six touchdowns, QBR of 95. Against LSU, 15 for 23, 200 yards, three rushing touchdowns, and a QBR of 97. 
Or my bad, my bad. He had four rushing touchdowns and over 150 yards on the ground. I said three. Jalen Milrow has been playing some really good football, and that's the main part why he's getting some Heisman love currently. But it's not just Milrow. It's the entire Bama team. I think every player is getting better and better and better and more comfortable every single week. And I think Alabama is just now, I know we're extremely late in the season, only got a couple weeks left, but we're just now figuring out who we are. We're figuring out our identity on offense and defense, and I still think we have a lot of untapped potential. Whereas a team like Texas, I think they reached their potential in week two. That was it. Ever since the week two game against Alabama, Texas hasn't looked that good. And we thought the loss to Oklahoma wasn't that bad, but... After seeing what Oklahoma's done the past few weeks, yeah, it doesn't look good. I don't think anybody wants to play this Alabama team right now, especially when they're hitting their strides. Offense has looked amazing the past few weeks, and Caleb Downs is slowly turning into the next Minka Fitzpatrick. Or I said slowly, really quickly. If you don't know who Caleb Downs is, you'll learn about him in a couple of years. He's going to be making a lot of money in the NFL. I could sit up here and talk about Alabama football for the next three hours in a row and not get tired of it. Y'all know how I am, but I'll leave it off there. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh, Robert!